So I've actually filmed this video once already and I edited it and then I accidentally deleted the raw footage. So I have to film it again. And here we are. As you saw by the title of this video, it is about why your leopard gecko may not be eating. And there are a number of reasons. People often reach out to me and ask me why the leopard gecko isn't eating. And it's often for a seasonal reason and not for illness or other issues like that. But I'm gonna go through all the reasons and I'll start with the ones that I find are most common that people don't know about. So let's start with brumation, which is basically hibernation for reptiles. It's a period of time in which leopard geckos and other reptiles may be less active and they may turn down food and it can last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months so I'll use Asha and Eddard as examples Asha's up here Eddard's right here Asha is a gecko she's an African fat tail gecko that brumates hard she stays in her hot hide the entire time won't even use her humid hide and she just literally does not eat she does not move whereas Eddard just decides that he doesn't want to eat for like a week or two and then he's back to eating which is great because he's an enigma and I don't want him to go off food because he's already got issues with being an enigma. There's definitely a difference in terms of like each gecko. Some geckos brumate really hard and some just brumate very lightly and some don't brumate at all. Brumation occurs in the cold months of the year so you'll often find that your gecko starts brumating in like November, December, especially like I'm referring to the fact that I live in Indiana in the United States. It depends of course where you are in the world, where the colder months are for you, but since I live in Indiana in the United States, I have colder weather in November, December, January, and February, which is when most geckos in my house will brumate. With brumation, especially depending on how long it is, you may notice some small decreases in weight, but it should not be anything drastic. Now, right after brumation, especially in my house with 21, 22 geckos, um, I notice that ovulation occurs pretty quickly. So in terms of the calendar year, right after brumation stops for all the geckos, it's like ovulation starts, it's like right away. So brumation typically stops, like I said, in around February, it's when the weather starts getting warmer, and then ovulation starts in the early spring, which is like March, April, <laughs> and by May, most of the females are in full ovulation and are not eating. So ovulation is different than brumation because ovulation can only occur in female geckos, and it happens at a different time of year, like I said. And also, in my experience, geckos who are ovulating are much more active than normal. Where brumation is marked by a decrease in activity, I think that ovulation is marked by an increase. However, with ovulation, you will also see a gecko that doesn't want to eat. My gecko Shireen did not eat like at all when she was ovulating. Fortunately, she ovulated for a very short period of time. Shireen has severe enigma syndrome and it would be really bad for her to ovulate for too long and I was really worried she would develop eggs but she didn't thankfully so. She's back to eating again. She's done ovulating and at this point in time most of the females in my house have stopped ovulating. So let's see it's June 29th and uh, they've been ovulating now for a few months and it just depends. Some geckos start a little bit sooner than others just like brumation but I just had Renly, who's usually my longest in terms of ovulation. She just started eating again. So right now, Amy has her beat. Amy still hasn't eaten. And she hasn't lost like any weight. She literally looks the exact same. One thing to note about ovulation is that sometimes your gecko will lose weight because of the development of eggs. You'll notice that your gecko gets thinner, but they're not actually getting thinner in the stomach, just really in the tail and you can hold your gecko up underneath of you very carefully and if you're nervous about doing this you can put your gecko in a clear tupperware container with a secure lid and then hold them up and look and the thing about leopard geckos is their skin is translucent so it's very easy to see through and you can see egg development i'm not going to include pictures because i personally don't have any experience with this except for one time and it was a it was a, over a year ago now and it was with miss aria who decided when I adopted her that she was gonna develop eggs right away. <laughs> so don't know why she developed eggs. I haven't had any other gecko in the house develop eggs and typically they won't lay in fertile eggs unless they've been presented to a male at some point in their lives. But fortunately, Aria has not laid again this season. So nobody has laid any eggs in this house. Well, except the crested gecko and the gargoyle gecko. That's a different story, but leopard geckos have not laid any eggs, thankfully. But with ovulation, you can experience some weight loss and to confirm it's ovulation, you can look at their underside. If you see egg development, that's beyond ovulation. That's not the same thing. Ovulation is small little like 
spots of redness they can be anywhere from like this big to this big and they can be one spot or a few spots i would definitely google some pictures online or ask a breeder i only know this from experience and from asking other breeders myself so i would definitely recommend doing that to become familiar with what ovulation looks like in a female leopard gecko but egg development is much different you'll see large opaque ovals on the interior of your gecko and they'll typically be along the sides and they'll be vertical if you see egg development or even if you're just concerned that egg development might occur during ovulation, what you can do for your gecko is to make sure that if they do ever take food, that it's dusted with a calcium powder and a vitamin supplement. I recommend Rapashi Calcium Plus, but that's what I use, and you may use something else if you want to, just to make sure that your gecko is getting the calcium it needs. And you can also keep a calcium bowl, such as this one, in the enclosure for them to eat out of at their leisure. Please keep in mind that this is calcium without D3. When you dust food, you want to use calcium with D3, but in the enclosure, you want to use just plain calcium carbonate. I have a whole video about it. I'll include it in the links below if you're interested. But anyways, ovulation information are probably the, the most often answer to a gecko not eating, especially if the husbandry is correct. So I just, you know, wanted to obviously go on those first. But these are some other reasons why our leopard gecko might not be eating. So if you have just brought your leopard gecko home, or you've given it a new enclosure, or you've redecorated its enclosure, or anything like that, the gecko might not be eating because there's been a change in its surroundings, and that's entirely natural. When I first got Benjamin, he didn't eat for two months because he wasn't sure about his new enclosure and his surroundings. Some geckos will eat right away, some it will take a few weeks, and some could take months like Benjamin. He's an out layer situation so if they don't eat for months that's <laughs> he's an enigma I don't know what to tell you he's special but most geckos will eat within a few weeks it shouldn't be multiple months like Mr. Benjamin over here it's really important to allow your gecko to have that time to get adjusted to its enclosure it's new it's scary try and relate to them be on their level imagine if you were put into a new place completely out of your will you know leopard geckos didn't ask to be in captivity so imagine just for a second that you're picked up from a pet store or from a previous home or from a previous enclosure and put in a new one it's a startling thing and so for some geckos it's a period of time where they may choose not to eat another reason that your gecko may not be eating is because it is picky so i have a few geckos in my house who won't eat certain foods and others who will i'll use merlin as an example merlin will not touch superworms i can't even trick him to eat them he does not want them but superworms are a favorite amongst the rest of my leopard geckos then you have geckos like Tywin. Tywin's favorite food is superworms, whereas if I were to offer hornworm to every other gecko, they'd go crazy. But he's like, yeah, hornworms, whatever, give me a superworm. He'll still eat the hornworm, because he's a monster who'll eat anything, but he prefers superworms, and that's out of the ordinary. Every single gecko has a preference. It's definitely worth it to try a variety of different foods, not just to see what your gecko likes, and not just to try and entice them to eat if they are currently being picky, but also because offering a variety of foods is the best way to guarantee that your gecko is as healthy as possible. If you offer just mealworms, if you offer just crickets, if you offer just dewy roaches, if you offer just hornworms, if you offer just one type of food, it's not going to be as healthy of a diet as if you offer more than one. I have a video all about this. It's also in my Leopard Gecko Care playlist, which is where this will be, and I'll include that in the link below as well. Actually, I'll probably put it at the end card at the very end of this video, so if you wait to the end, you can just click on that to watch it. I have found that if a gecko is being picky, like Mr. Benjamin down here, who often will just stop eating because he's bored of whatever I've been giving him, he will eat hornworms. So hornworms are just big lovely juicy caterpillar looking bugs they turn into moths after some time they grow really fast don't feed any food that's bigger than the space between your leopard gecko's eyes hornworms can get incredibly large and so you just you want to feed one that is the right proper size but anyways hornworms are full in calcium and moisture they're delicious every single leopard gecko that i have likes them go figure my bearded dragon doesn't but every leopard gecko I have, and my African fat tail, she also likes them too. So if you're having an issue with your gecko not wanting to eat certain protein items, you can definitely try hornworms. They have been a solution, a fix to every single gecko in my house who has been like, meh, I'm not feeling this food anymore, which often happens with my special needs babies. So I always like to have hornworms at least once a month for my geckos, if not more. They are a little pricey. But if you have just one or two geckos to feed, it's not so bad. Another reason that your gecko might not be eating is because you are overfeeding or feeding too much. So you may be offering too much food in one period of time, or you may be offering food too often. I feed my leopard geckos by offering food 
every, let's see, I would say every other day to every two days. So I'll feed on a Monday and then I won't feed on Tuesday and I'll feed on Wednesday and I won't feed on Thursday and I'll feed on Friday. Or I'll feed Monday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, Thursday, not Friday, not Saturday, Sunday. It just depends. Typically in the colder months, I feed the second schedule and in the warmer months, I feed the first one. This is for adult leopard geckos, not babies. Babies obviously can eat more because they're growing. When you're offering food, you don't want to offer too much. So I offer two medium superworms or one large superworm in that period of time or you can offer like eight mealworms you can offer one hornworm you can offer a few little dubia roaches it just really depends on your gecko size also some geckos are really small like aria who is only like 50 grams and then you have geckos like tywin who's 120. so it really just depends on your gecko and it will take some learning for you and your gecko as well but just make sure you're not overfeeding or feeding too many waxworms for example wax rooms are very addictive and they can make your gecko very fat and also make sure you're not feeding too little because you don't want to starve your gecko or stunt its growth so it's really just a process of of learning and if you're noticing your gecko is not digesting all of its food such as like when you look at its poop there's like actual insects left in it or if they are up chucking food like if they're throwing up uneaten food like they obviously weren't able to digest it then you're feeding too much or the items that you are feeding are too big Last but not least, illness. And illness is something that, you know, shows itself differently in each leopard gecko. There can be mouth rot, there can be eye infections, there can be parasites, there can be all kinds of issues. And so if you're noticing that your gecko is becoming lethargic or is having some sort of other issue with its body, like I said, it could be an eye infection, it could be mouth rot, or if you're noticing that your gecko is dropping weight very quickly, I would recommend seeing a vet. If you're noticing any one of those aforementioned things in addition to not eating, then it is likely not from brumation or ovulation or what have you. I would recommend 100% seeing a vet because obviously you want your gecko to get better. I think that's everything. So brumation, ovulation, a new environment or new enclosure, settling in, that sort of thing. Pickiness, feeding too often or feeding too much, and also illness. So those are some of the things that I've come across as reasons why a leopard gecko may not be eating. Like I said, the one you'll come across most often if your husbandry is correct is just ovulation or brumation. But let me know what you guys think down below if you have any experiences with any of these. If you like this video, leave a like and please subscribe. If you hit subscribe, also hit the bell. That way you're notified when I post videos. I also have a second channel that I'm currently working on and I will leave that in the description down below as well if you're interested. There's all kinds of links down below, by the way. Social media, merchandise, Patreon, all kinds of things. So if you're interested in that, please give it a look. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!